Hello everyone, welcome to yet another show on Sakshi Apologetics Network on refuting Rajiv Malhotra and Kamakshi Dhanraj. Uh, it looks like uh, uh, the second video of seven minutes probably, um, you know, she made a lot of allegations against Christians and she talked about um, um, like uh, starting a blog or uh, maybe uh, producing series of videos about quitting Christianity. And uh, uh, it's one thing to leave Christian faith, and it's 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 another thing. It's uh, it's altogether a different provocation to talk about um, helping people to quit Christianity. So we will talk a little bit about uh, all of that. Um, from uh, we will talk a little bit about all of that uh, with uh, George this evening. Hi, George. Welcome. Hi, Praveen. Uh, so George uh, is the one. I mean, let let me introduce George a little bit. George is the one. George and Jerry were the ones uh, that started Sakshi Apologetics Network along with uh, a lot of us who were in different states of India, about uh, ten states now, um, approximately ten states now. We are working, and uh, we started uh, way back in two thousand and six and refuting Islam and uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, things like love jihad and things like grooming girls and things like. Uh, are challenging the divinity of Jesus Christ, etc., etc. And at that time, from that time onwards, George and uh, uh, others have been very instrumental in in bringing the strongholds down for the for the kingdom of God. So, uh, to begin with, what do you think about um, uh, that video, George? Have you? I mean, I'm sure you have watched that video. Yes, uh, I watched that video, Praveen. Uh, as you as usual, she has been. Uh, making allegations. It was just allegations without any proof. Uh, she hasn't named anyone who shamed her or, you know, she has just, in fact, if you compare what she has spoken in this video and the previous video, uh, we can surely say that even here she has contradicted herself. Uh, she has, In the previous video, she mentioned that they were praying for her and in this video, she says that people are shaming her. So what do you mean by shaming, like by family and friends? Do you do you really see that practice in Christianity or, or it is, is it true even in the other side as well? Of course, it is true even in the other side of the uh, other sides of the faith. For example, Hindus and Muslims and etc. Like, like apostasy in Islam yeah. and apostasy in Hinduism. We have witnessed yeah. that for thousands of years in India. We know that people who have, uh, um, or who did not follow the Sanatana Dharma have been, uh, you know, have been vandalized, have been brutally killed sometimes, brutally accused of uh, so many things in this land. Yeah. And uh, and compared to that, family, you know, asking questions about her faith and why, what made her uh, give up her faith. Is that really shaming her or, or how do you look at it? Uh, in fact, I would say that, uh, you know, as I already mentioned in a previous video, she says that, you uh, you know, people were praying for her and they communicated to her that she would come back and that they are confident that she would come back. But she made categorical statement saying that she's not going to come back. But still people communicated to her and said that they are praying for her. This is not shaming. This is out of concern that they are praying mm -hmm. and she should be happy uh, to know that people are concerned about her. Mm -hmm. These people would pray even for her other needs if she says these are the needs that she has. Mm. They would not hesitate to pray. Mm. Uh, this is out of concern that they are praying. Mm. And, you know, she may think that they are not intellectually sound as she claims to be right now. But in spite of all that, they, these people are concerned for her. And that's why they pray. Christians pray out of concern not to shame or put down anybody. And in fact, if you look at, uh, you know, what she has been claiming in a previous video, if you watch that, uh, and her practice as a as a young child uh, before she came to Christianity in, when she was in Hinduism uh, that was shaming in fact they were asked to change clothes as uh, before they entered the house that was shaming the Dalits or uh, Muslims or Christians whomever they used to play that was shaming them as untouchables and that was actually shaming where you know actually the practice was because they played with somebody that, you know, they had to change the clothes. That is communicating and practicing untouchability to an extent. So, so you think uh, uh, that uh, she actually went back to the culture of shame and honor from the culture of truth and uh, lie. So, because she was exposed to 
so-called um, truth that she claims. She left the truth and went to the shame and honor culture because she already practiced this, it in her, in her past. Uh, you know, I don't know where she went. I can't comment on her internal state. Uh, but what I well, see... Well, there is a question here. I mean, when she, is, when she went back, she didn't go to a, um, an agnostic forum. She didn't go to a, a atheist forum. She went to a Hindutva goon forum. She went to a forum which divides India. She went to a forum, you know, that raises money in the name of Infinity Foundation to, to divide India, to fund universities, to profile um, hardworking, um, uh, you know, Indologists and, uh, you know, support Indologists of their ideology and su- support Indologists of breaking India concept. So that's the reason I'm, I'm asking you about this. Uh, you know, uh, when it comes to her internal state, I'm not sure about that. But when it comes, when as a practice, what she has, she is doing, because the scripture asks us to test and, uh, you know, analyze people based on the practice or ba- based by the actions that they do, based on the actions that they do. So from her actions, she is actually communicating that she is in favor of people who oppress, who beat up Christians who, you know, who are oppressive and, you know, who wants to want to take India in a regressive way, you know, maybe 5,000 years or, you know, 10,000 years back. So she's in support of that, those kinds of people. Recently, you know, as you know, Karnakar and some of his uh, people uh, poured uh, water mixed with cow dung on a few people who were distributing tracks. So she supports those actions. You know, if she has gone and, you know, is friendly with them, uh, she supports those actions. She hasn't come out criticizing those actions, but she speaks uh, so openly about uh, people shaming her. Mm. In fact, they haven't shamed her. Well, she also she also posted a couple of posts on the Facebook saying that Sanatana Dharma is the best form of religion uh, if mm-hmm. given, a, given a uh, given fair analysis. And uh, I mean, this is, uh, I'm putting it in my own, uh, my own my own uh, paraphrasing language but uh, her uh, you know her inclination definitely is towards these funders of uh, uh, the criminality within India mm-hmm. and uh, so so I think uh, I think I, I certainly am sure positive that she is definitely after uh, that kind of uh, mob who are trying to divide India and who are trying to spread hatred against Christians and Christianity and profile the Christian faith. Anyways, coming to the second part, uh, you know, another question. She says that uh, anybody that questions Christianity are profiled and they say, you know, you you, you do not have good relationship with Jesus or you have, uh, uh, you, are inf- you are influenced by Satan, you know, etc, etc. And also she says, you know, uh, uh, whoever is asking, whoever is thinking about Christianity and I believe in Christ, but... And the moment somebody says, but she wants to encourage them by uh, by having this blog or maybe a website called Chris, Crit Christianity. How do you see this? I mean, are you afraid? Are you kind of baffled with this kind of statement? And are you are your young people and are your, um, you know, church members uh, uh, very afraid of this kind of movement? Uh, in fact, I want her to, st- I would personally want her to start the blog. So that uh, it would be an opportunity to preach Christ more. Mm. And, you know, if she asks real intellectual questions, uh, it would be an opportunity to answer her and uh, pro- promote and uh, preach the Christian faith to people who are seeking. And many people may have the same questions mm. of who are not in the fold of Christian Christianity or who are not following Jesus. Mm. They may have the same questions. And by answering those questions... We would be, you know, uh, helping people who are seeking uh, to come to know Jesus and to follow Jesus. So we are not afraid of her questions. In fact, we want her to start. We want well, her to. Well, you know, we have witnessed for the past two years. She has been saying that we will question, will question, will question, and we haven't seen any, you know, any series of series of videos, any serious content, you know, given out. It was all just some, um, some, you know just vain words anyway so coming back to the question again uh, you know Rajiv Malhotra also says like you know freedom to question is important and because she has got freedom to question she is profiled and stuff like that do you think 
from his ideology hindutva ideology is he uh, of the i mean can we understand that rajiv malhotra supports questioning i mean freedom to question uh i don't think so before answering uh, that question about rajiv malhotra i would uh, like to ask you know i think i missed out on one of the questions that you asked me about uh, no uh, no i i think i missed out on one of the questions that you asked me about she mentioning no that you know if someone questions in christianity they are called as uh, uh you know not following jesus sincerely mm-hmm. or uh no because they are not following jesus sincerely satan has entered their life and stuff like that mm-hmm. maybe she faced uh, you know such questioning or such kind of things were mentioned to her uh, uh when she was following jesus or you know, when she claimed to have followed jesus mm. what i would say is uh, you know there may be few people like that or you know there may be many people in christianity like that mm. but christianity that doesn't mean christianity is not an intellectual faith that uh, doesn't mean that uh, pe- there are they aren't people who study uh, uh, the christian faith from an intellectual angle uh, in fact i am the one who asked so many questions uh, even before i was saved and i was saved Uh, i started following jesus because of questions uh, give me a break you, your name is george and you have been a christian right from your birth right uh you know that's what people think that mm-hmm. you know uh, if i have, if my name is george i am a follower of jesus uh, right from my birth but that's not true that's not what the scriptural stand biblical stand is also uh someone should follow jesus on their own will uh they should decide to follow jesus that's when uh you know they become christians that because even in scriptures the follower of jesus mm. were called christians mm. uh, that's what the bible says mm. so there is a there is a starting point for anyone any follower of jesus he starts at one particular point in his life is nobody is a born christian so so when we coming back to the freedom of questioning if you question your authorities in christianity are they profiled are they like you know discriminated or set you know uh, or looked at as a as an apostate uh in fact i would totally disagree with that because mm. the history of the church if uh we study and she claims to have studied the church history i don't know how much she studied the history of the church has been a history of questioning martin luther whom she mentioned before was the one who questioned the catholic church in fact he nailed his 99 theses uh, and that's how he quit uh, the catholic church and he started a reformation uh, uh, within the christian faith so you know uh, and before uh, before martin luther there were many people john huss was one uh, one of them and uh, there were many doctrinal debates uh, within the church and uh, you know if you study the doctrinal debates it was a faith of questioning and uh, i don't know from where she got this kind of history where you shouldn't question if you are questioned you are called uh, uh, as if your satan is influencing you and stuff like that i don't know you know rajiv malhotra claiming to be uh, an intellectual agrees with her and says oh you know uh, goes with her saying uh, you know oh that means you know satan Uh, you have become uh, uh, someone belonging to satan and things like that uh, that is so childish of childish of rajiv malhotra to speak like like that uh, if he has studied church history he should know there was augustine who debate you know there was uh, debates uh, that went on uh, with augustine on the sovereignty of god and many mm. things like that mm. the church is ridden with people who have asked questions and those questions were debated mm. So so do you think the church of uh, indian uh, or the indian church is ready to handle such questions because they are of the opinion i mean rajiv is of the opinion that indian christians are uh, you know they very seldom give a thought about religion and they are not really uh, thinkers kind of christians uh in i would totally disagree with that even because you know one of the person that i would mention from an indian context is uh this person wouldn't be known even to rajiv i think i don't know if he knows and he, i'm i'm sure that uh, kamakshi wouldn't know this person and in the past uh, you know let's say in you know, 80 or 100 years 100 and more years ago there was a person by name kv simon in kerala he used to he used to debate with people in sanskrit 
Mm. And he was known as Mahakavi K.V. Simon. Mm. And he debated so many Hindus. Uh, and nobody could stand him. And uh, this is the history of the Indian church too. That there were people mm. who were debating. Mm. Uh, Hindus and even other religious people. Mm. Uh, this is the history of the Indian church. Indian mm. church wasn't anti-intellectual as such. Mm. But you know, what I would point out here is the experience of Kamakshi as she started following Jesus, as she claims she followed Jesus in the past, uh, her experience is of emotionalism. Mm. She didn't have any experience of intellectual study mm. as she followed Jesus. Uh, so in for the, the past, first time she, she is exposed to an intellectual, uh, in, you know, inquisitive uh, approach and there she didn't follow through um, a mentor or somebody that can help her understand these things. But all of a sudden, when she's exposed to those things while she's going through a lot of turmoil in her own life, in fact, and that's when probably she turned uh, a, a blind eye to the truth is what you're trying to say? Uh, from her own testimony, she was exposed to questioning or the questions that were asked uh, in the Christian faith by people who were agnostic or atheist or from wherever they come from, whichever kind of belief they come from. Uh, she experienced those kind of questions uh, when she went to US and particularly when she went to a theological college and theological college, they study these questions as uh, it was mentioned by Sai Krishna Gomatam also hmm. that he himself studied these questions and these questions didn't uh, take him back to his Hindu uh, fold or uh, it didn't, uh, you know, make him quit his belief in Jesus, but he studied more rigorously, which she should have done, mm. uh, which she failed to do. And when she speaks, uh, we can understand the shallowness that she has. Mm. Because even here, she tries to paint it with a broad brush. Her experience in India was just emotional uh, belief uh, probably in, uh, mm -hmm. in the Christian faith. And she took that to US and uh, you know, over there she encountered questions which were asked against Christian faith. And, uh, you know, that then, you know, she left Christianity. That's what her experience is. Because of that, she paints with a broad brush saying all Indians are like this. And then, you know, Rajiv Malhotra parrots her, uh, parrots the same thing along with her saying, at least in US, you know, uh, Christians uh, are a bit intellectual and all that. Uh, you know, Rajiv Malhotra being a researcher or a or on, claiming to be, you know, <laughs> he's you know I, I'm giving him uh, he's the benefit of doubt. He's a fake scholar in my opinion. I'm giving him a benefit of doubt he, because he claims, on that, he, he claims to be that way. So if he, if he really knows, he should know uh, Mahakavi K.V. Simon. Uh, and he can, you know, they, the his, uh, Kerala Christian history... Uh, he knows only how to break India, George. <laughs> uh, I mean, the only thing he knows, George, is how to break yeah, India. Yeah, I mean, that I, I totally agree with that. That, you know, uh, with his ideology of Manu, uh, he, you know, Manu, uh, if someone follows the ideology of Manu, they uh, can't but break everything. Uh, in fact, divide and rule was the ideology of Manu, not of the British. Yeah, yeah. And absolutely. in fact, British just allowed the status quo to exist in oh, India. Yeah, yeah. Because the, that's what the status quo was. When the yeah. British came in, it was the Manu's law that was followed yeah, in can't India. Can't agree more than that. Can't uh, agree more I know. That, yeah. It was Manu's law that was followed. And uh, uh, British allowed and maintained that status quo. Mm. They didn't change it. Uh, so, you know, now what these people who follow Manu, what they do is they try to brush it it brush it on the British saying they invented it. But if you study the British rule in any other part of the world, uh, they didn't follow divide and rule. So you're saying that uh, the divide and rule policy uh, is what Rajiv is trying to employ even in this case. However, let me let me come to, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we have seen Delhi, Delhi elections in, in India and for this for the chief minister post of Delhi and some uh, MLAs in Delhi. And there have been uh, uh, a lot of relig religionizing of the politics in India. We have seen people shouting chants like, you know, Desh ke gaddaron ko goli maro salon. I mean, kill those who are, uh, uh, who are uh, the traitors of India. And in their opinion, traitors of India are those who are, um, you know, who left Hinduism or who, who, who are not practicing 
practicing yeah. of hindutva but in the same party which rajiv malhotra raises money for from india from i mean from us and other parts of the world to break india and to bring that hindutva raj hindutva rule he says hindu should help human beings to be on their own um uh, even if they are uh, you know ag- agnostic so for example in india um in most of these uh, uh, pol- uh, you know political leaders that are fighting against uh, the so called hindutva goons are agnostic they don't believe in a particular uh, you know absolute truth of religion they just they just follow they they are agnostic some of them are agnostic some of them are atheistic and for them these guys say to kill them openly and uh, with uh, with another mouth he says you know let we, we should help what do you, how do you look at it i mean especially those who are in us the the audience in us how do how should they understand these hypocrite uh, statements in fact when rajiv malhotra says that the freedom of religion should be there and people should be allowed to believe whatever they want and he says hindu should help uh people who are coming out of christianity even if they don't join the hindu fold and if they want to be agnostic that's absolutely fine hindus should come forward to help them and all that uh when he is you know when he is speaking uh that language i would say that you know it is only applicable to people you know he would particularly apply this to people who come out of christianity and islam but if people want to come out of hinduism he would have a very different standard uh you know he would say you know beat them up maybe you know he would not allow such freedom if he allows such freedom he hasn't spoken anywhere uh you know he hasn't condemned attacks on christians uh in india he hasn't uh, condemned violence on christians and muslims in india uh he hasn't spoken out openly uh you know as he is doing right now so you, uh, against you- christians and muslims moreover when he advocates freedom to hindus uh you know he advocates hindus should come forward to help people who come out of christianity and islam uh i would say you know and if any speaks about freedom i would ask would he give freedom to kanaiya kumar uh who is opposing uh, sort of uh, manus hinduism uh kanaiya kumar is primarily opposing manus hinduism mm. he is not, not opposing hindus as such right yeah. you know because he himself says that he comes from a hindu background mm. uh he comes from a place where uh, you know krishna is worshiped and things like that uh but you know well his name is krishna yeah kanaya yeah. is krishna yeah. yeah so uh rajiv people like rajiv malhotra uh wouldn't support uh, a person like kanaya kumar because mm. uh he is uh, for them he is opposing uh you uh, know hinduism as such but kanaya is not opposing hinduism he is opposing the manus hinduism which is divide india into segments and make people backward make people slaves for the brahmanical religion mm. so but uh, you know uh, rajiv wouldn't uh, speak out openly against all those uh, you know social issues so do you think his approach is very hypocritical in that nature ah uh, absolutely you know uh, because even when kamakshi spoke uh, that uh, this practiced untouchability uh, when she was small before coming out of hinduism and be- before becoming christians that as a family they practiced untouchability rajiv didn't go ahead and say as hindus we shouldn't be doing that uh, you know he didn't speak anything like that he he you know he, he himself supports it i think and i think he's absolutely fine with such practice where you know hindus would change clothes if they interact with our uh, christians muslims or dalits so he hasn't come out and spoken very clearly condemning such action that a brahmin or a hindu shouldn't do that well i think it's too much of an expectation to expectation from uh, rajiv malhotra to condemn such practices because he is he is a hindutva guy and he is a hindutva goon who raises money who raises uh, found, you know infinity in the name of infinity foundation he raises money to spread the casteism to spread the the inhuman practices in hindutva to spread uh, the hatred among human beings within uh, within the you know indian subcontinent and and of course as uh, george you were saying that you know they took it from here 
to to america when it comes to um, you know uh, but i think people like rajiv malhotra are taking the hindutva ideology even to um even to uh, us because i i mean because they conducted another uh, you know uh, uh, another conference in us um claim, you know to claim us with hindutva or to to saffronize uh, america you know to saffronize america and here they talk about uh, you know not spreading any other religion um you know hindutva is the sanatana dharma and we don't convert people and etc etc but how hypocrisy what kind of hypocrisy is this um the yogi adityanath went and spoke in that conference where they spoke about uh, saffronizing america what do you think about that uh, george in fact ambedkar spoke very clearly uh, about this in his book where he said that this brahmanical religion is not a men is not only a menace in india but when these people go out and settle in other nations they would become a menace there as well uh they would start implementing their caste system uh you know they would follow the divide and rule policy even there uh in fact uh, you know rajiv malhotra when he worked for software companies and all that would have entertained primarily only brahmins and you know people like that and he would have profiled people and hired only certain kind of people and these people you know it is there in their blood uh at least for few people who are out and out sold out for the manus religion like rajiv malhotra uh they are like that i don't know where you know only the light of christ can transform them mm. where you know the scripture says there is neither jew there is neither male nor female uh there is you know there is no difference as such all are equal uh in the sight of god uh, only scripture and the bible uh can give them that equality because god when he created created the male and female uh created them equally as human beings but uh their scriptures is very clear where it says that you know brahma uh created I- inequality mm. in society and that is sociologically they follow they implemented sociologically and that's what uh you know these people are promoting Mm. as a government as a religion mm. as everything mm. and even uh from his uh, uh organization right so so well this is a this is a pretty good this has been a pretty good talk george but let us you know uh give a a uh, you know a fair invitation to people of america people of people who live in europe people who live in india who are you know who wants to uh, who support secular ideas who support um you know whether it is hindu whether it is christian whether it is islam whoever they are let them be questioned and let them be exposed to questions and let them let us give um you know a fair um a chance to question uh, so 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 george what do you think about you know finally this is the final question what do you think about quitchristianity.com whether it is a blog post or a, a website um, how are you going to respond to that In fact I would say that she should come up with quit christianity mm. as soon as possible so that we would know the kind of questions that she has I think that she would only have shallow questions and she would not have uh, intellectual uh, provocative questions as such where we would be able to uh, go deep and examine we need not even do that mm. uh, we we need not even go ahead and study we can uh, answer her questions outrightly that's what I think her scholarship level is uh where we can answer her without even much study mm. uh and uh, we are waiting for her blog to come up so that it would be an opportunity for us christians to promote our faith and this is what this uh, this is what uh the church history has has been mm. people have asked us questions mm. and we have responded mm. uh, we haven't we haven't gone out to critique others mm. uh first but people have critiqued us mm. first and we have responded to them and in answering their questions right so this has been the church history if kamakshi has studied church history uh, in any which way uh so we want to repeat what has been happening right from jesus on uh, people came and asked jesus questions mm. he didn't go around asking questions uh, to people people came and asked questions to jesus and jesus responded to them 
and uh, and that's how he strengthened his disciples too mm. and that's what we want to do just mm. like our jesus mm. so 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 will you also come up with something i mean uh, uh, to help people uh, you know to answer these questions uh, i mean we can come up with uh, uh, maybe a website where people can understand uh, better what is hindutva is mm. see hinduism is very different from hindutva hindutva mm. is much political right uh, and things like that it is not concerned with the devotion of people and things like that but hindutva is more political uh, and it is much more related to uh, nationalistic movements uh, which were part of history uh, where hitler was uh, uh, a nationalist as such and many such people who perpetrated great violence uh in society so hindutva as such uh can be related to something like that so we want to expose uh this kind of ideology a fascist ideology called hindutva so we can come up with a website to expose uh you know uh, the hindutva as such okay yeah that's fair and uh, uh, so let's keep talking about these things and let's keep uh, uh you know feel free to ask questions um as a response to the video uh, and uh, uh, like our videos if you like it and also subscribe to our channel if you like it and hit the bell button and, and also please please feel free to write comments on on the video and i have been receiving a lot of uh, appreciation and questions also from our friends from us and our friends from europe thank you so much for doing so and uh, uh, at the end i would just like to um i would just like to give you a a uh, you know my understanding of what uh, uh, being in west you should do is uh, i think you know people like uh, rajiv malhotra have carried um, uh, this propaganda against christianity and against islam and against everything including hinduism uh, to to promote their ideology of hindutva which is different from hinduism which is different from indianness and they have been raising your money my brothers my sisters to break my country so be careful in promoting be careful in in giving money to such goons or such international mafia who is willing to break my country who is uh, you know struggling hard to break my country i would like to have your support with us and uh, we don't need any financial support but we just need your support in prayers we just need your support in um you know working with us in terms of uh, identifying people such as rajiv malhotra who are funding um universities to stop the real scholarship and uh fund only those who like to speak or who like to parrot the way they want uh the world to know what hindutva is anyways keep watching our shows thank you so much